Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for switching us to the channel. We're looking at the T95E6 in World of Tanks Blitz. And in Blitz, it is a tier 10 American heavy tank, whereas in real life, this was an experimental medium tank meant to replace the M48 pattern. And there were actually four versions made of the T95 the E1, the E2, the E3, and the E4, the E standing for experimental. Once tanks were in uh, operation, they were designated with an M, and then a number, if they were still in test, they were a T with a number. And versions of an experimental tank were uh, got the added suffix of an E with a number. The T95E4 was supposed to have a 120 millimeter gun, uh, or 105 mil gun, the T210. But the T123 122mm rifled gun was also added, and that's actually then this version. So you're looking at the T95E4 with a different gun to the T95E4, and that then becomes the T95E6, which also gets a T gun, uh, a, a T with a number of gun. But it's all pretty darn confusing, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Martin, please go on with the tank. Is it worth it? Well, it, um,. We're looking at uh, Flaveline Potatoes here, who managed to bounce one shot and penetrate one shot, so, uh, well, that's uh, one for one, that's uh, quite good. And you can see one of the traits of the tank is the gun depression. That's not bad, it's 10 degrees and that's pretty pretty darn good for uh, for the tier. And of course, maximum in the tier, the maximum is uh, minus 10 degrees. And if you get it into a position like this, uh, you can have real, real good fun. It's also a fairly quick vehicle, maneuverable, you can bounce shots from an FV, as you can see with a frontal turret you have uh, a, well, fairly large sized weak spot on the, top, on the top, which is practically the size of, uh, I don't know, what's it like, a mini disc or something, a pizza box, it, it is really big. And the gun is typically American, it, it, it is accurate if you let it fully aim, and then the next fully aimed shot is far from accurate. Um, but it also can do this. Look at this. What, what, what five like potatoes is going to do here? He's going to bait the shot from his VK, shoot him once. The yes, airstrike in place. He's going to get shot by the VK as well. And there he goes downhill. I mean, it has quite a quick pickup speed for a, for a heavy tank. And, and you can clearly see the, the, the lineage towards a American medium tank because it, it moves around practically the same uh, compared to a T-54E1, uh, unfortunately pattern, uh, Pershing, etc. And the power to weight ratio is, well, very effective. It hasn't got a big engine, only 750 horsepower, but it's a fairly light vehicle as far as heavy tanks are concerned. The gun gives you AP for your standard ammo, heat for premium ammo at uh, 280, uh, 340 in terms of pen and 258 for your AP, 400 alpha, 340 on heat alpha. That's the norm basically for most of the tier 10 heavy tanks. Um, and yes, you can bounce shots with the tank. You can 
be effective hull down because you've got a front plate at 140 nominal thickness an angle that goes to 360 you have a very good turret front at 400 mils uh, around the cheeks you have the cheeks on the left and the uh, right which are angled backwards and that yeah, the turret top it is a weak spot but 237 effective that means you, you, you can shoot through your own weak spot if you're facing against uh, another t95 e6 that's true but it also means that it is by no means a guaranteed pen as you've seen from my <laughs> from my little intro <laughs> sorry about that it was more than a minute but it just had to I mean it had to fit in completely it had to fit in completely um <coughs> then again we're looking at uh, Nifla here, one of the lady tankers who is a subscriber to the channel. And she's going to drive the, the T95 E6 as well, for also fitting a camouflage net. I don't really get why people want to fit camouflage nets on tanks like this, uh, as big as this, at, uh, uh, to tier 10 heavy tank. But hey ho, whatever floats your boat, if you want to fit a camouflage net, who am I to judge? And you can see that Nifla is going to use the tank as a bit of a heavy. And, and this is indeed a, a heavy looking more like a medium compared to some medium tanks. The 54 model one, I'm looking at you, looking like a heavy. Or the T26E for Pershing, which is a medium tank and then a practically heavy with an armor. This is a medium tank designated with a designation with a classification of a heavy. And I think you have to use it, use it like that. You have to use it uh, hold down. You have to use it on flanks. You could side scrape at a pinch. It's not the best side scraper in the world, but uh, the side armor is uh, it's pretty good. It's 76 millimeters a nominal thickness. You have some tracks over there which do help, and you can get the size up to 400 uh, mils in total. So yeah, it, it will work in in situations like that. But and here's, uh, here's the thing, while uh, Niffler bounces a shot from the grill, there, isn't, there really isn't anything that this tank does better, except maybe for the power to weight ratio and, and the pickup speed, because it was more like a, a medium tank originally in real life. There's nothing that this tank does better than, uh, than a chieftain. I mean, you get 400 alpha on your on your AP. The Chieftain has got APCR for standard ammo, which with a slightly better penetration, not much. It's only two mils in total, 258 versus 260 on a Chieftain. The Chieftain gets APCR, so your penetration on premium ammo is a lot better, 340 instead of 310 on Chieftain. But the Chieftain has the same amount of gun depression. It has a better camo rating, it has got better uh, aim time, better dispersion, better dispersion upon movement and rotation, less power to weight ratio and thus less pickup speed, it's a bit of a heavier tank. But yeah, why would you get this tank if you have a Chieftain? Now, sorry Wargame, I'm going to be honest, I don't really see the point in buying this tank. And at the moment, at the moment I'm, I'm reviewing it now, I don't know what the sale price will be on the tank. And again, as with the T23 E3 review I did uh, a few days ago, I think this is pretty much a collector's tank. If you really must, if you really want to have it, by all means get it. I mean, it's your money. Um, you have to pay for it. If you want to get a tank, just get it. I'm, I'm not... I'm done telling people oh, you should not buy this thing, but I think it's a bit of a waste of money if you have a chieftain. That's that's all I'm saying. I'd say spend your money wisely. <laughs> I mean they are expensive. Um, that said, you can have some good games in the tank. You can make this gun sing. It has a good gun for an American tank. It has got some functional armor. And I want to move shots into this uh, E50 and go in and then <laughs> you roll for 312 and he rolls for 357. And Nifla's gonna keep moving and shooting and killing Thunder Ties in the E50 and he was a bit of a, I think, a, a, a World of Tanks of Legend. I've seen him before on the uh, on the American forums, which were still functional and really much working back in the days. It seems to be all Discord at the moment. And here's, here's the beauty thing about this crossbreed between a medium and a heavy. 
once you get the tank up to speed and you can see it doesn't take that long to get it up to speed you can relocate really quickly it is a tank that can work pretty well in an open map like this and Niffler's gonna get the kill shot on Chieftain yes there she goes three kills 3687 damage dealt 640 block and again a lowish uh, mastery as you can see but yeah there's only 226 people playing the tank or 260 people play the tank in the last 90 days and i think that speaks volumes if you must if you want to have it it's all yours but if you have a chief i think it's a bit of a waste of money that's it for today ladies and gentlemen thank you so much i catch you all on the next one cheers and happy tanking